Begin by creating a profile and plan for the logical domain by using the Create Profile wizard. In this example, I'll create a guest domain. Provide a profile name, choose to create a deployment plan, and select guest domain as the subtype. Enter a name for the guest and a starting number to be appended to the end of the name. For the configuration, change the number of CPU threads to 16 and leave the rest of the default settings as they are. Select a NAS storage library for the guest domain's metadata and a SAN storage library for its operating system. These libraries were created earlier specifically for this purpose. You'll select a LUN later when you apply the plan. Select a network for the guest domain. Review the summary and finish. The profile and plan are listed in the plan management pane. Create an OS provisioning profile for the guest domain. In the Create Profile OS Provisioning Wizard, start by providing a profile name and description. Be sure to select Logical Domain for the subtype and Virtual Machine for the target type. Very important. Make sure to select Oracle Solaris 11.1 Spark for the operating system image. Also very important. And SRU 10.5.0 for the image version. Also select Solaris Small Server for the software group. For the operating system setup, select your language and time zone, specify VT100 for the terminal type, enter a password, and you can leave the other settings as is. Specify an Op Center Administrator account to be created on the operating system. This example doesn't use iSCSI disks, so I'll skip this panel. Set the swap file system size to 8192 megabytes. This example doesn't use name services, so I'll skip this panel too. Review the summary and create the profile. Next, you need to create an OS configuration profile for the guest domain. In the Create Profile OS Configuration Wizard, start by providing a profile name and description. Make sure that you select Logical Domain for the subtype and Virtual Machine for the target type. Automatically manage the guest with OpCenter and deploy an agent controller. Also make sure that Enable Multiplexed I.O. is selected. On the Specify Networking panel, leave None selected. And to keep things simple, use one network interface. Review the summary and create the profile. Create a plan that you can use to provision and configure the guest domain's operating system. For the plan, select the OS provisioning and OS configuration profiles that you just created. Make sure that the number of results and assigned targets match these values and save the plan. Now, put all the profiles and plans together into one final plan by using the Configure and Install Logical Domains option. Select the plan that creates a guest domain and the plan that provisions and configures an operating system onto a guest domain. Make sure that the number of guests to create, number of results, and number of assigned targets match these values and save the plan. In the Assets pane, select your virtualization server and perform a Create Logical Domains action. In the first panel, select and apply your final plan. You can leave the Apply with Minimal Interaction option selected. As you work through this wizard, you don't need to change very much. You can leave the name as is, Select a LUN in the SAN storage library. 
Retain the network connection settings and network resource assignments. Make sure the Create Logical Domain Summary looks good and continue in the wizard. Retain the network for the boot interface and specify an IP address and a host name for the guest domain. Review the provisioning summary and continue. Now, from this point on, you don't need to change anything. Just review each panel and then schedule the job to run now. If you want, in the Jobs pane, you can open the guest creation job and watch its progress. OK, fast forward 75 minutes and the job is finished. Keep in mind that the timing might vary for your system. You can see that the guest domain and its operating system are listed in the Assets pane. If you select the guest domain, you can view its VNet and IP address on the Network tab. Listed on the Port Connectivity tab are the alternate MAC addresses, which OpCenter will use for non-global zones within the guest domain. On the Storage tab, you can view the LUN that stores the guest operating system. If you select the operating system for the guest domain on the Dashboard tab, you can view things like the operating system's IP address, whether it's running, its type, and whether it's agent managed. On the Virtual Disks tab for the Virtualization Server, you can identify the virtual disk that belongs to the guest domain. That concludes this video. I'm Jody. Thanks for watching.